Hi everybody, welcome back to our Vamble series. I am Mike and this is Sir Cedric, our 1988 Mercedes T1 Bremer, which we currently convert into a camper van. Today it's time for a dirty topic, the wastewater system. I haven't spilled any dummy piss over my hands, but unfortunately over my feet. In this video I want to show you our solution for an underfloor grey water system and how we build it. We have two sources of grey water, one is the kitchen sink and the second one is the composting toilet. This might be a little bit surprising because in the usual builds they use a small canister under the composting toilet to collect the uh, disposed water. And in our case we want to have that run into our main waste water tank. This is I think a very big advantage because then we have a faucet with a ball valve to empty the tank and we do not have to handle with uh, canisters of piss. Here are all components which we use and all of them are of course linked below in the description. A 30 liter plastic tank with solid 8 millimeter thickness of the wall and big opening. This attachment set of tension straps which can hold 150 kilogram each. A huge one and a quarter inch ball valve faucet to empty the tank and various pipes and hoses which I will show and explain later in the video when I install it. Let's have a look under the van to check out where we can install the tank. The Mercedes T1 has this perfect space on the left hand side which equals the space of the fuel tank on the other side and we can mount the tension straps over these support beams without drilling new holes anywhere into the chassis. And here comes my special design which is quite the opposite of the usual one. So usually you would drill holes in the floor of the van and mount the tank like this. But I think this has the disadvantage. First uh, you have to drill new holes which I don't like. Secondly then the tension straps really press into a very small area of the tank which is not really ideal. That's when I had the idea that I still have this aluminium box from the fire truck equipment. And uh, it's really like custom made for our tank. And now I can drill the holes in the floor of the box and run the tension straps like this over the support beams of my van. And this is really, I think, the perfect solution in our case. Before we install the box, we make a few modifications. I want to install the tank upside down with the cap at the bottom so we can easily clean the tank anytime necessary. So we cut a corresponding hole in the bottom of the box. Then we have to install the water inlet and outlet, each one and a quarter inch in diameter. Let's start with the outlet and drill a hole with the hole saw. We use a big ball valve faucet to get the wastewater out of the tank quickly. I think the bigger the pipe and the faucet, the better it is. Of course, we have a conflict with the box now, but instead of cutting the box shorter, which would be a viable option, we decided to cut a hole for the faucet because that gives it a cleaner and nicer look and also supports the faucet when we open and close it. Next is the inlet. Again, cutting the hole with the hole saw. Right after the inlet, we install a basic non-return valve, which might not absolutely be necessary, but can't be wrong. After the non-return valve, we use simple HTDN40 household pipes. One more hole is necessary in the tank for ventilation. Here we can use the existing half inch thread together with a short hose. This hole is now not only for ventilation, but it also acts as an emergency overflow. But to avoid such an embarrassing situation, we will cut another hole in the top of the tank and install this Votronic sensor, which checks the fill level of the tank. It has to be cut according to the height of the tank so that the measuring electrode is one centimeter above ground level. Mm -hmm. 
Then we drill the holes for the straps at the front end of the box and at the bottom in the back. At the front the tank is fixed by the wall of the box, at the back the straps will fix it. And at one side we attach a piece of wood to prevent the tank from sliding left or right. Now let's cut the two necessary holes in the floor of the van and of course never forget proper treatment with primer and paint. For sealing the holes I will use Sika 521 but I do that later when I install the floor of the van. That's now the final setup for the tank. So we have our aluminium box with the 30 liter tank, the tension straps to hang it, the fill level sensor, inlet from the sink and from the toilet with the non-return valve and here is the faucet to empty the tank which looks like this and you can open and close that and this here is for ventilation slash emergency overflow. The pipe for the sink gets a connector for 32 millimeter and then this flexible pipe to the sink which we can form into a U or an S to get a simple siphon or odor trap. The pipe for the toilet gets a hose connector and then we continue with a 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter hose inside the van to the toilet. But building this toilet is a story for another video. The two bands of black rubber are just to protect the contact area between the tank and the steel beam of the chassis against mutual chafe. And now let's try and see if it really fits under the van. Unfortunately this is now a crappy position to work if you don't have a lift. By the way, we do not insulate the tank because we don't want to use it in winter temperatures, but it would be easy to install a heater mat in the box below the tank if necessary, or just leave the tap open if conditions allow that. With the height adjusters, which are part of the attachment set, it's easy to fasten the tank tightly under the van. At the moment the two pipes coming into the van for the sink and for the toilet are just provisionally connected because the floor isn't yet finished, but we can test the system of course. It seems that the water runs into the tank exactly like it should and we installed the non-return valve at least in the correct direction. So I will fully fill up the tank now and see if there are any leaks. But it seems there are none and even the cap doesn't leak, that's very good. Now let's open the valve and see what happens. Nice strong flow I would say and um, I haven't spilled any dummy piss over my hands but unfortunately over my feet so probably we will add a hose which we can just uh, put on when we open the valve that uh, we do not have to piss on our feet. But otherwise, I would say mission accomplished. So let me know your thoughts about my wastewater system in the comments below and maybe like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you want to join us on our next van build episode. See you next time. No, stop, wait, this time we really need a supplement because I was not happy with spilling the piss over my feet. So I bought this 40 millimeter short hose and... This time I hope we get a better result. Yes, much better. So with this small improvement, I think the project of the grey water tank is finished. And now, see you next time.